I'm Rob Williams, I'm the National Chair of the National Shop Stewards Network. We give support to workers taking action, that's why we're here today, supporting the strike by the Royal College of Nursing, and we're also supporting other workers taking action today as well. So, you've asked questions of the Independent, we're going to discuss them today about what's going on with the strike action that's taking place. So the first question is, Paul asks, where do they think the money is going to come from? I think the money is there in society. The problem is, is that so much of our society, the money goes to the super wealthy, the rich and the powerful. It goes to their friends in business. But when the Tory government say there's not a bottomless pit, they found the money during COVID to fund PPE contracts to give that to the private sector. And then they say to these health workers at the bottom of the line, sorry, there's not enough money for you. We don't accept that. This is a very well wealthy economy, something like the fifth or sixth wealthiest economy in the world. The problem is the money's going to the wrong people. I think it should go to the likes of them because these are the people that need it. These are the people who did an incredible service during COVID. These are the people who kept us safe. Wouldn't the strikes be more effective if they were coordinated for greater impact? Of course. If you went across that road there, of course, the majority of people there are nurses on strike for the first time in their history. But dotted around there are Royal Mail workers, RMT members, transport workers, workers from all parts of the economy supporting those workers taking action. All workers are suffering together. We say in the National Shop Stewards Network, support each other's strikes, but the most effective thing we could do against this weak and divided Tory government is strike together, take action together. Ashton asks, soldiers can't strike, why should nurses? I'll turn the argument back, really. Why should soldiers not be allowed to join a trade union? I believe the police, the army, whatever, really, should be allowed to have the right to be organised in a trade union. Armed forces have had a pay rise of about 4% as well. That's not sufficient. So my view is soldiers should have the right to be organised, the right to be join a union. How does a pay freeze materially affect workers in their daily lives? I tell you what the material effect is, you don't put the eating on enough. I tell you what the effect is, you don't buy enough food. You don't do the things you need to get your family through this cost of living squeeze. So when the government says the workers are paid enough, what those government ministers don't have to do, in my opinion, they don't have to make the choice about whether you put the eating on tonight, whether you say to your kids, put extra clothes on, you say to pensioners, those who are perhaps the most vulnerable of all, that you have to put an extra coat on during the day and during the night. So having, a, having an income that is sufficient means perhaps some the difference between life and death. That's how serious the issue is. We are looking after our families. For that, we need an income that pays the bills. Well, I'd like to thank you. I'd also like to thank you, Independent, for the questions, but also the chance to highlight the strike of the nurses across the road there. 